This video is for review quiz 4.3 and 4.4. And once again, we're working with um, logarithms and exponential equations. Here, we're looking to expand this logarithm. Um, a, a logarithm has, has a few rules that can expand it, namely uh, log base b of m times n equals log base b of m plus log base b of n. So multiplication here, multiplication goes to addition of the logarithms. And then log base b m over n equals log base b m minus log base b of n. In this case, we had division goes to subtraction. Once again, multiplication and addition are connected, division and subtraction are connected. Um, the last rule we can use is log base b of m to some power of p. This is the same thing as taking the power and bring it to the front as a multiplier. Log base b of m. So we can take powers on the inside and move them directly out in front. This third rule is really not a new rule. It's actually based on this first rule here. Um, but the third rule is kind of easier to, to, to work with um, in, in practice. So these are the rules we're going to be using to expand a logarithm. Um, this one specifically, we have log base 4, 64 over uh, the square root of x plus 9. Now, here we have a division on the inside of the logarithm. So I'm going to do the second rule here, right? We have rule 1, rule 2, rule 3. I'm going to use the second rule here to expand this thing out. So I get log base 4 of the top thing minus log base 4 of the bottom. That's just, that's just rule 2 there. Uh, the m is the numerator, so that's going to go first, and n is the, new, is the, new, is the uh, denominator. That's going to go second. So the top goes first, then minus the second thing. Okay, now to simplify this stuff, um, first off, 64 is the same thing as 4 uh, cubed. And I can rewrite the exponential, or the um, radical, as x plus 9 to the 1 half power. And so what I can do here, log base 4 of 4 uh, cubed, the log base 4 and the 4 cancel, give me just 3. And I can take this power and move it directly out in front. That's using the uh, third rule there. Power goes in, into the front. That gives me log base 4 of x plus 9. And now we just try to figure out, can we expand this last logarithm at all? We have x plus 9 on the inside there. If you look, look back at our rules, we have a logarithm with multiplication on the inside we can expand, and a logarithm with division we can expand. This has addition. So there is no rule there to expand it, therefore this is the best we're going to get. All right, one half log base four, it's nine, Let's check it. And that's correct. Okay, for this next problem, we want to condense. So we have two logarithms here. We want to condense it as much as possible. Um, the reason why you'd want to expand it is, as you could, as you saw here, we could we could cancel out this thing here. Sometimes condensing the logarithms allow you to cancel things. Things will interact with each other and then reduce, and then you might be able to cancel things in the end. So. Uh, try both ways to, to see if the problem gets clear. A lot of times these problems will just tell you what they want, want you to do. Uh, we have natural uh, 1 6 the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. And we're trying to condense here. So we're trying to combine these two things. The only thing we can combine though is logs. So I'm, I'm going to go from the right hand side to the left hand side. That's condensing. Going left to right is expanding. But you'll notice here that these logarithms all have nothing in front of them. So we have to have that in, in, in this case too. We can't combine these two into one logarithm because we have this one sixth here. 
we have to get rid of that. Now that's actually not hard to do because this is just a multiplier in front of a logarithm. And a multiplier in front of a logarithm, we can bring the power onto the inside. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the one sixth on the inside power of, of x. Like that. And now I have two logarithms, natural logarithms. I can combine these using the first rule. Logarithms that are adding goes to multiplication of the um, arguments, the, the inside thing. So we're going to combine these by multiplying the insides. And it, it probably doesn't really matter, but uh, the 1 6 power is the same thing as the sixth root of x. And so the, now we have a single logarithm with everything on the inside versus two logarithms with you know a number in front. So that's, that's a way you, you can condense logarithms down. Okay, natural log of the sixth root of x times y. Make sure the y is on the outside of the, of the radical, not on the inside. OK, that's correct. All right. We're trying to solve this exponential equation, and we're going to solve it in any kind of a unique way. I'm going to make both sides have the same base. And if both sides have the same base, then the only way they're equal is if the powers are equal. So 128, um, you can actually do some work with 128 here. And you'll see that 128 is 2 to the power of, let's think, uh, 2 to the power of 5, 6, 7. 128 is 2 to the power of 7. Let me just make sure that's correct. Yeah, 128. And 32 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 5. Now we have a power to a power in this first one on the left hand side. That's the same thing as multiplying the powers. We have 2 to the power of 7 times x and 2 to the power of 5. So we have the same base on both sides. The only way this equation is true is if 7x equals 5. That can, that's the only way it's possible. And that, of course, means that x equals 5 sevenths. That's, that's how you solve an equation using like bases. You just uh, Finding the base just depends on, on what you see. Um, I, could, I could have used 4 here. Um, 4 is also a common base between these. It'll be a little bit weirder. Two is an easier number to work with. Um, but that, you just need to play around and try to find a base. OK, this is a, a similar problem here. This one's a little bit easier to see what's the common base. We've got 4 to the x plus 9 equals 16 to the x minus 8. And hopefully, you can see that 16 is just 4 squared. You can actually go further and say 4 is 2 squared and 16 is 2 to the power of 4. There's no need. As long as you have one common base, then you're good to go. I'm going to use 4 because it's an it's a easier number to get to. Four, uh, 16 is 4 squared. And now if I have a power to a power, I just multiply the powers. I'm going to distribute the 2 into there. It, it needs to be distributed. 2x minus 16. And the only way these equations can be equal are if the powers are equal. So x plus 9 equals 2x minus 16. I'm going to subtract the x, add the 16. That gives me 25 equals x. Right? Yeah, I think so. OK. Now, you can, of course, take this number and plug it back into the original equation. You get uh, 4 to the power of 25 plus 9 is going to be, just uh, plug it down here, 4 to the power of 25 plus 9 equals 16 to the power of 25 minus 8. That's going to be 4 to the power of 34, 16. 17. And I told you that 16 was 4 to the power of 2. 
17. And 2 times 17 is 34. So we do actually get the same, the, the, the correct answer that with that um, solution. So x equals 25. That's correct. Very good. Okay, solve the given equation, exponential equation. And we're going to first express it in terms of natural logarithms. That's what this first part is saying. And then actually find the solution. So what we're trying to do here is just solve for x. Now, we have an exponential um, function here, so we're going to need to take a logarithm to get rid of the, the uh, base and get x down kind of with the, the rest of the numbers. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get the e the x by itself. And now, to get rid of the e, we're going to take the natural logarithm. Natural logarithm is just log base e, so it cancels with the e. That gives me x equal to the natural log of 5 over 2. And that's going to be our first problem, or our first answer here. Oops, 5 over 2. Okay. Um, solution set in terms of the logarithms is that thing. And now we can find an approximate solution. This is not a, a nice number to work with. It's going to be some long decimal number. Um, so that's the, the, the first thing you write here is an exact answer. Lo the, log or the, the natural log of 5 over 2 is exact. We can get an approximation by just plugging it into a calculator. 5 over 2. And it says round to two places. It's going to be 0 0.92. And that's correct. OK. So here we're going to solve this thing for, for x. And we're given a natural logarithm with x. So to get rid of a natural logarithm, we take the inverse, which is the exponential. So in the previous problem, we had an exponential, so we took a logarithm to solve for x. Here we have a logarithm, so we're going to take an exponential. The base of the, of the natural log is e, so to get rid of the natural log, I'm going to take e to the power of um, both sides. That cancels with the natural log and leaves us with just the x. And we get e to the 8. Once again, uh, it wants us to write the equation down without... Um, logarithms. So that's what I have written here. And this is an exact number. This number is going to be some complex number that's, um, it's, it's not complex, it's uh, some irrational number that's not going to be easy to work with. So this is an exact representation, e to the power of 8. Um, and so that's what they want for the first part. e to the power of 8 is the exact term. But we can get a decimal approximation by just plug it into a calculator. So we get e, um, e to the power of 8. Okay, and it wants two places, so we get 9096. Now there is one, one thing you have to be aware of, and, and that is to be sure to reject any value that's not in the, in the domain. So logarithms have a restriction on the domain. Logarithms look like this. They look like the base logarithm looks like that. And its domain is from zero to positive infinity, not including zero, and it does not include any of the negative x values. So if, you're, if you solve for the solution x equal to like negative one, for instance, the natural log of negative 1 is not a uh, valid um, part of the, the, the logarithm's domain. You actually have to reject that answer. So you always need to make sure whenever you start with logarithms that you are, are aware that you might need to reject answers. In this case, e to the power of 8, right? This was a positive number, and all positive numbers are in the domain. So this number is fine to work with. That's correct. Okay. Here, once again, we have a logarithmic equation, and we want to solve for x. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the logarithm by itself. Subtract 9. Divide by 32. 
uh, negative 4 over 32 can be reduced down to negative 1 eighth. And to get the logarithm away, we got to take e to the power of both sides. That cancels with the logarithm, giving me e to the power of negative 1 eighth. So that's the equation written without um, logarithms. e to the power of negative 1 eighth. That's also my exact solution. And this number, um, the uh, approximation, gives you, let's see, e to the power of negative one eighth. Gives you 0 0.88, which is a positive number. And in the original equation here, we have the natural log of x, and so we need to have positive numbers to be in there. So that, that is allowed. Yep, that's correct. Okay, uh, log base four now. Instead of natural log, we've got log base four. Still the same process base isn't doesn't really change how we do this this one however we have two separate logarithms and to solve this what we really want to do is have one logarithm because one logarithm we can get we can get rid of um very easily so i'm going to combine these two logarithms into one i'm going to use um, one of those rules that we started with that if you have an addition of logarithms you can combine them by multiplying the um arguments, the, the inside of the, of, the, of the logarithms. Here, now we have a single logarithm and a number. We can get rid of the logarithm by just taking four to the power of both sides. And that gives us x plus seven, x plus four equals four to the one, which is just four. Okay, so at this point, um, we need to solve for x. And the only way we can solve for x here, this is a quadratic equation. So we have to expand everything out and get everything over to one side so it's equal to zero and factor and solve. So in this case, we have to expand um, by foiling x squared plus 7x plus 4x plus 28, 11x plus 28. And now I can subtract the 4 so that I have this thing equal to zero. Oops, uh, 28 minus 4 is 24. And now I can factor and solve. So to factor this thing, uh, AC method, A times C is 24, B is 11. Two numbers that multiply to give that is going to be positive 8 and positive 3. And since A is 1, I can immediately factor this thing down into x plus 8, x plus 3, which gives me x equal to negative 8 and negative 3 as solutions. Now, this is the kind of problem that you have to be wary of, of uh, rejecting solutions. x equal to negative 8, if you took that and you plugged it back into this original equation here, negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. And the logarithm with whatever base is down here, the base doesn't matter, logarithm of negative 1 is not a valid um, it's, it's not in, in the domain of the logarithm. Therefore, it cannot be used as an answer. So this one we actually have to reject. You plug negative 3 into here. Negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4. So that's fine. A positive number is fine. And negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Again, a positive number is fine in the logarithm. So negative 3 is actually our only solution here. The other one we, had, we have to reject. That's correct. Okay, this is very similar uh, in style. We're just trying to, oops, we're just trying to uh, get x by itself once again. Plus. 
This is log base 10 because nothing's written there. Uh, 32. I'm going to combine on the uh, left hand side of the equation. I'm going to combine these into one logarithm. That gives me log x times x minus 4. And now I have a single logarithm on both sides of the equation. These are both log base 10, so I can get rid of them by just saying 10 to the power of both sides. That will actually cancel both of the logarithms, giving me x times x minus 4 equals 32. Okay. I can distribute this thing, giving me x squared minus 4x equals 32. This is once again a quadratic equation. So I'm going to get it equal to zero just to factor and solve. Okay, AC method. Uh, positive, no, negative eight, positive four. Um, yes, that, that gives me what I want. A is one uh, again here, so we have x minus eight, x plus four give me the solutions positive 8 and negative 4. All right, we have to check these. Positive 8, uh, logarithm of positive 8 is fine. Logarithm of 8 minus 4 is fine. Logarithm of positive 32, that one's fine as well. So 8 is our solution, or, or is in the solution. We have to check negative 4. Logarithm of negative 4, well, that right there we can, we can stop because um, a negative 4 cannot be in the logarithm. So we have only one solution once again. That's correct, very good. Okay, this um, function models the percentage of sunlight that reaches the depth of X feet beneath the surface of the ocean. As the light gets deeper and deeper, right, it's just the, the water diffracts it and I, th I think it just like loses intensity. Um, and so this is a function that, that uh, models this behavior. And it's asking us, if there's 1% of, of sun, surface sunlight left, how far down are we? F of x is the percentage of surface sunlight. x is the depth of, of feet, the, the, the depth in feet. So if we're looking for 1%, that means f of x equals 1%. So we have uh, 19. 0.990x, and we're looking for when is f of x equal to 1%. So all we have to do is solve for x, and we can divide by 19. Uh, 0.990x. And at this point, um, what you what you could do is you could, for instance, take the the um, log base zero point nine nine zero of both sides. That would cancel with the um, base of zero point nine nine zero that's underneath the x. However, that's a weird base to work with, and so what what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a little trick. You can always take, and um, you can take any base, but the natural logarithm is such a, such a nice, um, a base E is such a nice base to work with that we always take the natural logarithm. Now we're doing this because the, the, one of the properties of logarithms says that you can move a power into the front of the natural log or an, into the front of a logarithm. And here I took a natural log of both sides. That means I can take this power of X and drop it in front, giving me the natural log of 119th equals x times the natural log of 0 0.990. And the natural log of 0 0.990, that's just a number. So I can divide it out. Giving me x by itself. And so this trick, uh, it's, it's not necessary, but it's, it's probably easier to work with, and it's nicer to work with too. Natural logarithms is, is a button on the calculator that you can easily reach. You can get a different logarithm, different bases and things like that um, on the calculator, but it takes more work. 
And this really isn't that hard to do. It's also, like I said, nicer to work with. So this is what um, this is what we're, we're we're working with here. Um, actually, plugging that into a calculator. Let me do that here. Okay, I got x equal to two nine two point nine six nine two one two four, and then it continues. Let's actually, drop that last one and continue. It says um, rounds the nearest whole number. That's going to be two nine three. What point on the graph does, does this represent? Well, if 293 was the x coordinate, that means f of x is the y coordinate, which is 1%. So we have the point 293, 1. If you look here on the graph, two nine three one. each one of these tick marks is 40. We have 240, uh, 280, and 320. So 280 and 320, 300 is right around there, which means 293 uh, is just slightly before that. And if we look at the one on the intensity, we're at right 1% was on the intensity. Each one of these ticks are two, so two, four, six, eight. That means one's right here. If we go over on the one and go down, that looks to be just just about right for the 293 um 293 1 so that 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 looks accurate and that's correct okay okay this problem is is pretty much the same as um the previous problem here we just have a function talking about compounding interest and we have the certain part. So these tables are the exact same thing. This bottom one is where we actually enter the, the um, answer. We have 1,000 is amount invested, so that's going to be our P. Uh, number of compounding periods, that's going to be our N. Annual interest rate, that's R. It's going to be uh, 0 0.048. And then accumulated amount is going to be A. It's the amount after it. So we're looking for T. We're, we're looking for that variable. So I'm going to plug these things into here. A is the accumulated amount, which is 1,100. P is the amount invested, so 1,000. Then we have 1 plus the um, R is the rate, so it's going to be 0 0.048 over um, how often it's compounded, so 360. It's about once, once a day. Um, and then N is 360 again. 360 and t is is not known we're, we're trying to figure out what t is so we have this equation here let's try and solve it the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to divide by the thousand that gives me 1.1 equals i'm also going to simplify the inside there by making it a single number um, 0 0.048 divided by 360 then add that to one I'm going to be something like this, 1.0001, and then it's just going to repeat threes. Okay, at this point, this looks a lot like the previous problem where we had, yeah, show it again here. We had this, some weird base here and then some other number and then we, we want the variable down from the exponent so to get rid of this we just take the natural log of both sides we can do the same process here i'm going to take the natural log of both sides and that allows me to take this power and move it in front now i have the natural log of 1.1 which is just a number 360t times the natural log of 1.0001333, which is also just a number. We can get rid of these things very easily by just dividing them out. 360 and the natural log of 1.0001, dividing over to this side, and that gives me t by itself. So we have t equals, 
the natural log of 1.1 over 360 natural log 1.0001 and you'll notice that I'm not writing um, what the uh, calculator approximation of these things are. I'm leaving it like, like for instance, the natural log of 1.1. I'm leaving it as natural log of 1.1 until I get to the very end. Because currently, this is an exact representation. And I want to keep using the exact representation until the very end, which is when I finally will round. So don't, don't uh, calculate this thing out. Um, like don't don't get a number for it until you actually do the entire calculation to solve for t, which is what I'm doing right now. So let me get this plugged in and see what we get. Okay, and just to um, make sure you understand, um, here I did calculate the exact um, or the um, approximation, but when I actually plugged this thing in here, I didn't use this number. I went back and I used the 1 plus 0 0.048 over 360. I just didn't want to have to write this, um, this um, you know, 1 plus that whole thing um, over and over and over again. Um, I actually plugged this into my, my, my calculation. And that gave me, uh, around to the nearest whole number, is two years. And that's correct.